routine keep it clean this has been like the funniest friday morning for me in a long time so first i woke up i ain't gonna tell y'all how early it is because i'm like a little ravens crackhead or something but anyway i woke up this morning um early and i was just thinking like man Ravens just they 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 gotta win the Super Bowl this year. So I went and tweeted it, and then one of my guys replied to me. He said, "Ain't we been saying this since 2018?" So then on top of that, so I, I was go, going through Twitter, and shout out to Sarah Ellison because she said Jacina Anderson. She got a new podcast coming up, and one of her guests was former Baltimore Raven, obviously more known for his Seattle Seahawks time, but former Baltimore Raven Earl Thomas. Y'all remember him? I know I do too. But Earl Thomas. On his po- on the podcast with Jacina Anderson. See, I'm losing my voice already today and even start yet. But Earl Thomas said that he is better. So she asked him, so how would you feel if you weren't a hall of, uh, first ballot Hall of Famer? He said, I should be a hall of first ballot Hall of Famer, but I'm better than Ed Reed and Troy Palomalo. <laughs> what? You, you better than who? Like, <laughs> yeah, he was dead serious too, man. Earl Thomas Like Earl Thomas was a baller Do not get me wrong He was a baller obviously for the Seahawks He was a baller for the Ravens too For that short period of time And then he did say I I, I shouldn't have punched my teammate at practice that time But Earl Thomas said He is better than Ed Reed And Troy Pollard What? (laughs) So then After that I was scrolling on Twitter for a little bit longer You know Ravens flock They got the, the whole little community and whatever So somebody asked a question He said you just become the Ravens GM What's the first move you're making in the offseason You have full authority So somebody replied to that They said first getting a new head coach and defensive coordinator uh, Trading Marcus Williams and Brandon Stevens Trading for or signing a top pass rusher Reworking some deals to make some cap space Extending a few players Mainly Derrick Henry Drafting defensive line, offensive line and cornerbacks Trading Kolar and Tra- trading Charlie Cole and Justice Hill, just to name a few things. <laughs> and somebody replied to that, don't quit your day job, fam. <laughs> but anyway, T, keep it clean. Happy Friday, man. Happy Purple Friday. Get ready to play these Steelers in a couple of days, man. Um, I appreciate y'all. Now, uh, we got some a very surprising update. I mean, is it surprising? Yeah, it is surprising to me because I ain't think it was going to happen. But when you think about how super duper this player is then it kind of makes sense and we gotta get into it shortly before we do make sure you subscribe to the channel turn the notifications on it. <laughs> and leave a like on the video my friends click that thumbs up button i appreciate y'all i love y'all so much uh let's get into it so uh we knew kyle hamilton he was dealing with the ankle injury that he got in the Thursday night game against the Bengals last week. And I, I was saying, uh, when that injury happened, and especially after the game when Harbaugh said that it shouldn't be a serious injury, obviously there's no good time for an injury, but there can be a best time if somebody is to sustain an injury. And I feel like if it wasn't the bye week, then it would be the 10-day break. And he got injured in that Bengals game, and then Ravens had a 10-day break after it, which we getting, we on the tail end of. Um, but he, earlier this week at practice, they said he was, he was not practicing, but he was running off on the sideline. And whenever a player is off on the sideline running, then that's a very, very good sign that they're close. They may not be right there yet, but it's a very, very good sign that they're close and they should be back with the team very, very soon. Usually when they run off to the sideline, within the next seven days, they are back at practice in some capacity. But Kyle Hamilton, super duper D duper Kyle, super duper Kyle. He said, you know what? Yeah, let me up that. So he was running, a couple days ago, he was running on the sideline. But then yesterday, and I missed this because we were on a roll, so my apologies, y'all. But Kyle Hamilton, he, <laughs> he returned to practice, man. <laughs> Super duper Kyle returned to practice. Oh, man, Kyle. Oh, don't give me hope, man. Don't give me hope, man. Kyle Hamilton returned to practice. Now, he was officially limited at practice, but... Uh, Jeff Zrebic, he said the following That with Kyle Hamilton being back on the practice field, He said he didn't look bad He said he was running around good He said he, he looked fine So I said, oh <laughs> Hey that, ooh, 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 Hey If Kyle Hamilton can play in this game Versus the Pittsburgh Steelers And, and look, the, the thing is With Kyle Hamilton, if he's, if he's looking good at practice uh, We know if, if he's ready The Ravens are going to play him If he's not ready, the Ravens are not going to play him Because that has been something I don't know if y'all noticed, but over these past couple of years, 
the Ravens have been doing a much better job of not rushing players back before they're all the way ready. Now, remember, when they hired that coach from the Tennessee Titans who specialized in recovery, in proper recovery from injury, that was such a big hire that I think goes way under the radar, way under the radar. But it was a big part in helping change the Baltimore Ravens, their entire culture. Because injuries, as we unfortunately know, that was a big part of Baltimore Ravens culture for years. Um, they mishandled a lot of stuff. They mishandled a lot of players. And, yeah, y'all know the rest of the story. But ever since they hired him, they've been doing things a lot different. So if Kyle Hamilton is ready, that he's ready. They ain't going to be rushing him back. Like, oh, you only 75%. Okay, go out. No, no, no. If he's re he's ready. So... We need everybody that we can get for this Steelers game. We and Obviously, everybody's big concern is the Baltimore Ravens defense, as it should be. Um, Kyle Hamilton, obviously, is a baller. He's a playmaker. Even, even with the Ravens defense being terrible, uh, Kyle Hamilton still be making his plays. You know something I noticed about Kyle Hamilton? I know y'all noticed it, too, because if I've seen it, I know y'all seen it for sure. Um, he always does this thing where he lines up in a slot, and he blitzes from the slot. And... The court when he blitzes, it'll be a, it'll be a play where you you tell this is great film study and just great uh, what's the word I'm looking for just great instincts. Um, the quarterback will drop it, he'll snap the ball, he'll drop back and he'll try to throw it to a receiver in the flats. And Kyle Hamilton will jump it. It happens like not necessarily every game, but it happens a lot. And a lot of times that leads to the ball going up in the air and somebody almost picking it. Uh, as we know, it was the, the famous Deshaun Watson play from last year where Kyle Hamilton picked it off the the second play of the game. Took it back for a pick six, doing that same exact thing. And he continues to do that same exact thing this year. We're just waiting for some turnovers to happen from it. But Kyle Hamilton, he be all over that. And we know what Kyle Hamilton, he is a, a screen eraser. Um, obviously, excellent blitzer. Obviously, just he, he can literally do everything. We wish we had 11 Kyle Hamiltons on defense. Because if we did, then oh, we would lead the league in turnovers and sacks and pass cut and all of that stuff. But um, we love Kyle Hamilton, and, and y'all y'all know that again. That's super duper Kyle to you. So with Kyle Hamilton possibly getting ready to play in this game, like not now, I'm feeling like he will. Before y'all remember yesterday's video, we said I don't, I don't know it's looking like Kyle Hamilton gonna be playing. But now with this update, it's, it's looking like Kyle Hamilton could be out there on that football field for the Baltimore Ravens. So that's great. Now in other news, that's not so great. Um, Arthur Millette, Arthur Millette, another good blitzer from the slot, uh, another secondary player. He said he was in a walking boot yesterday. So I even saw, I forgot who this report was from, um, but I don't know if it was from Jameson Hensley or Jeff Zrebe, but somebody mentioned how, um, with Arthur Millette, uh, a lot of players were coming by to console him. And I said, Ooh, that's, uh, it's not the best news right there. Um, so where that came from, I, I guess he got hurt in practice. Uh, so, yeah. So it looks like we're going to be down Arthur Millette. I mean, we'll see. We'll get the official update on him uh, later on today when the Ravens return to practice this afternoon. So we'll go from there. But, yeah, that's not the best news in the world. But... The Baltimore Ravens are in shape to where they can withstand that. Uh, they started this season without Arthur Millette. Uh, he was dealing with an injury, and then he came back. Um, but now they could possibly, maybe, we'll see. Nothing's official yet, but they could possibly be without him. Um, so, boom, timing. Tredavious White. Like uh, Zach Orr talked about how he's been picking up the defense and whatnot, uh, and he picked it up fast, and he's been out there moving and whatnot. So, Tredavious White... He may have his number called a little earlier than expected. So we'll just see what happens with that. Um, but know that the Baltimore Ravens, they do have options in the slot. Obviously, you, Nate Wiggins and Brandon Stevens have been your primary outside corners when Marlon Humphrey is in the slot. So they can still continue to do that. Um, if they want to move some stuff around, uh, you have Tredavious White now. And John Harbaugh said that he'll be an outside corner. So you have the option there. So they, they can do some different things. There's still, again, our Darius Washington, obviously. So Ravens have some options in the secondary. Uh, but we'll see what type of adjustments they make and go from there.
Now we've reached my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. If you'd like to be part of it, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, uh, you can send it directly on Patreon. If you would like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And if you don't, it is A-OK. -okay. I love y'all, Team Keep It Clean. We got to give a special shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patron. He literally just became a patron like two minutes ago. Two minutes ago, uh, shout out to my guy, uh, Jammin. He's he been supporting for years, so I appreciate you, my guy. Uh, you already know what time it is. Thank you for that. Um, he, he didn't send a question. Maybe maybe right now, because he literally just became a patron. Maybe he's typing a question out as we speak. Who knows? Maybe we'll see later on. But let's get to these uh, questions. First one came from my guy, James, two times. He said, hey, Graven, um, been watching videos for the past three years now, and I look forward to listening to your thoughts every day. Uh, I just want to give you a huge thanks to your support for the Ravens and the news you bring us each and every day. Uh, this is my first time sending a question. I wanted to know your thoughts. Oh, no, first off, I, I appreciate you. You ain't got to thank me for nothing. I appreciate y'all tuning in every day because the most valuable thing that you have is not money. Uh, it's not it's not cars, houses, clothes, shoes, games, electronics. It's not anything material. The most valuable thing that you have uh, is your time. That's the most valuable thing because that's the one thing that you cannot ever get back. Like you can lose some money. You can get it back. You can lose a car, get it back. You, you, you get what I'm saying? You, you can get all that stuff. You can't get back your time. So the fact that you all come through every single day and spend a lot of your time every single day, I appreciate that a lot. So thank you for what you do. Um, he said, I just want to know your thoughts on the season moving forward. What's going on with the pass defense? Uh, we have amazing guys out there on the field, but it just seems like we are always giving up explosive plays or can never get off the field on third now. I think miscommunication. Um, miscommunication, um, guys just not doing their job. Maybe we do need to bring in Bill Belichick to help with the defense. So he could just re literally tell guys, do your job. Do what you got to do and let everything else come together. Do what you got to do. Um, he also said, uh, I don't mind at times because it allows Lamar to get. <laughs> he said, I don't mind at times because it allows Lamar to get more stats for his up and coming third MVP. But once we get into the playoffs, teams like the Chiefs, the Bills, and maybe the Bengals will prevail off of those explosive plays and third down conversions and eventually cost us the Super Bowl. So hashtag take keep it clean, hashtag roll tight, and hashtag flock nation. Appreciate you, James. Not one, but two times. Um, yeah, I think miscommunication. Miscommunication, um, missed assignments. Uh, sometimes straight up just guys getting beat, uh, but a lot of times I think it's just miscommunication. So Ravens really need to fix that. I mean, I mean it's already been, what, 10 games? <laughs> We're we still saying the same thing. <laughs> so, well, Ravens got to fix that. But know this, the positive, that the defense, they can only go up from here. Super Bowl. Next question came from my guy Frank. He said, "What's going on, in Graven? Hope you and the family doing well as always. I've been a subscriber since the meltdown of the Ravens in 2019 free agency with our departure with guys like Darius Smith, C.J. Mosley, Eric Weddle, etc." He said, "Sad times. I appreciate you sticking around since then. Cause yeah, it was rough. It was rough, but I, I appreciate you." He said, "But uh, since you've been filling my feed with Ravens news every day, and for that, I appreciate you. No, no, no I appreciate you." Uh, he said, "Can the Baltimore Ravens, in your opinion, win the Super Bowl with our team in the state? It is now. Yes, they can. Offense just gotta." be amazing they gotta be electric they gotta be both lights out and lights on too so they gotta be everything defense again if the defense just uh, they ain't gotta have this big 180 oh they locked down now that'd be great but they just gotta be decent they gotta be all right and and they got to what the defense has to do right now since they're obviously not the best and they're not gonna add anybody that's gonna oh the, this game changing player just came no you are who you have who you have. You not you aren't what you are, though. You could change that. Um this defense, they need to put on a new personality. That's what they need to do. But um what they need to do is make the most of their opportunities. You can't drop you this defense can't afford to drop picks. This defense can't afford to miss sacks. This defense that they can't afford to miss when the play comes their way, they just gotta make it. That's it. Um he said, uh I get the defense is nowhere near as good as it was last year. Oh yeah, exact opposite too. Um he said, but our offense is also nowhere close to what it was last year. That's true. He said, our offense is number one in basically every category. Lamar is looking to have a career year with, with his third MVP. Can the Ravens get to the Super Bowl and win if every game we play? Uh, oh, can they get to the Super Bowl when every, when every game we play has to be a shootout? They can. They just got to win the shootouts. That's it. That's as simple as that. He said, thank you for taking the time to answer this question. Again, hope all is well. Go Ravens. Appreciate you, man.
Five and three or three and five, but still win. Hmm. Hey, team, keep it clean. That's the question came from my guy, Michael, by the way. He said, I hope everybody's doing well and your families are blessed, especially yours and Graven. I have a question. Uh, which one would you rather have? Five big plays from the offense and three bad ones from the defense or three bad plays from the offense and five big plays from the defense? Uh, either way, we still win. And like Devontae Adams picking his favorite quarterback over a championship, I'll see myself out. Oh, LOL. I like that. Which one would, would I rather have? Uh, five big plays from the offense and three bad plays from the defense? That's the one we already got. How we go eight and three. Next question came from my guy Joshua B. He said, "What's up, Engraver? Hope you are doing good, and you hope your family is doing great mentally and physically. What's up, team? Keep it clean. Hope all of you and your families are doing good mentally and physically. A win is a win. Is how I would describe that game against the Bengals. Uh, this is going to be a long message. So sorry in advance. First and foremost, thank God Kyle Hamilton is okay. The offense is so amazing to watch. They are really a pick your poison with the run and the pass, and it's true with players too. With Tylen Wallace going off, uh, you don't know who's going to go off in this offense, and I love it. Boom, perfectly said. He could have ended it right there, but he got a lot more to say. He said uh, one of the best things Greg Roman gave us was that QB sweep." PO. I give him credit for that play, but he still held Lamar back. Now, this defense uh, is so bad. I'm 19, so I really didn't understand football in this defense until like 2016 or 17. But since then, it's the worst Ravens defense I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. Even if you ain't been watching football very long, this defense is terrible. Uh, or the pass defense, not the run defense. But anyway, he said people can argue 2021, but with the amount of injuries we had that year, they get a pass. But this year, everyone is healthy and all this talent to be this bad is crazy. I had to go back and watch last year's defense because this year is so unwatchable and I couldn't take it. After a couple of sleeps and rewatching stuff, Zach Orr didn't do too bad. He just didn't adjust well in the second half and had our struggling cornerback on top two wide receiver uh, Ravens need to stop having 21 on other teams best wide receiver man is so annoying because we know what's going on and we know what's going to happen with a QB is what exactly what the QB is looking at now with that it's tough because Ravens don't have cornerbacks follow so if Ravens had cornerbacks follow that that would be a whole structure and culture blow up because they don't have cornerbacks follow I think that they should I think that could help but they don't do that anyway he said I think all has to combine the 2019 Ravens scheme and last year's scheme to turn down the cover zero blitzes I say this because if you look at 2019 we had three good cornerbacks that were man-to-man cornerbacks in last year's scheme uh, we had Kyle in the slot a lot I think Zach needs to bring Kyle back in the slot more and move 21 to the third safety role because he has too much talent just sitting on the sidelines but needs to switch something up uh, or have Washington back there which moves Marlon back outside and follow the other team's best wide receivers and have either Wiggins or White on the uh, on the other side so see you're talking about a complete culture change because they don't do that uh, but anyway he said and on longer downs bring in White or Washington Wiggins and Marlon and have Kyle at linebacker or 21 to 29 and safety and then run a little more man to man which can help our defensive line who had a good game last game even though it was against a banged up bad offensive line but it's still growth that's true uh, hit me out engraving the team keep it clean 32 still needs to start I know I know he's been a big weakness this year but if we have that mix of uh, that mix of scheme it helps and simplifies it for him just to go get back to Roman deep I saw like two or three flashes of 32 and we were running man to man Roman and closing out the tight pocket passes last game this would allow him to just stick to that how do you feel about this and what changes would you do in the defense to help it out yeah that's the same thing we said in the previous question I, I would do the same thing like ha have a cornerback follow have the corners follow and play a lot more man but that's just Ravens they don't do that he said but Steelers are next up so I'm hyped for this game and hope PQ gets ran over and stiffed on by the king we know the Steelers like to run the ball and with Russ back there he's going to take some deep shots to Pickens and now with the new jump ball wide receiver Mike Williams they are going to try to 1v1 jump ball deep that's true that's a good point uh, we need to stop the run and also watch out for 88 in those jump balls the Steelers defense is the top two defense to stop all offense on paper we have to stop who I think is the best pass rusher in the league in TJ Watt with our young and struggish offensive line uh, last year the Steelers didn't stop or beat Lamar all wide receivers did and with how he's playing this year he gets the key win against the Steelers yes yeah, he needs it he needs it for sure Ravens need it to just continue what they've been doing they had a 10-day break ain't no excuses anyway he said but surprisingly the Steelers haven't been the best at stopping the run so I think we need to run the ball and get everyone involved including Johnson oh Deontay Johnson a little petty in there he said I, I think we win by three Ooh, close one he said, what do you think we need to do to beat the Steelers? Thank you for listening and reading this long message. You're the GOAT. Until next time. And that, he ended it off with. He had a lot of truth in there, but he ended it off with a lie. We are definitely not the GOAT of anything. Um, and he said, also, did you know that PQ has the green dot? I love that matchup against Lamar, who's doing a lot of pre-snap adjustments this year. Oh, you got the green dot for real? I ain't know that. Look at PQ. Okay, PQ, keep doing your thing. Not this week, but keep doing your thing. Um, to beat the Steelers, Ravens, just that, that offense got to go off, man. The offense got to do their thing. The offense got to be consistent. They cannot turn the ball over. That game last year, yeah, they should have blown the, blown the Steelers out. All them drops, like, you, you you can't have a repeat of that like, this year. And the defense, like we talked about in previous questions, they got to be opportunistic. Because Russell Wilson, like, he got his confidence right now. He, he feeling good. He looking good. So Ravens got to take that away from him. Any mistake that he make, make him make mistakes. 
But again, when he makes mistakes, if you make a bad throw, if you get a good pass rush, you get a hit on Russell Wilson and makes a bad throw, you can't drop no picks. You, every single opportunity, you cannot miss it if you're the Ravens.